pre-season is done and dusted, we've been made favourites to win the league this season. So let's see how we start off Season 2 of Walks to the Prem. Hello guys, it's me, Bad Jokes, back at you once again with another video. And today guys, we've got episode number one of season two of Walks to the Prem, my Kingsley series here on Football Manager 2020. It's the only Kingsley series you need to be watching here on YouTube. Don't go watch anybody else, people. And yep, guys, it's been an interesting pre-season. It's been a busy one. It's taken me a long, long time. It's now, what's the time now? 10 past 7. I've been playing this since about 10 a.m. this morning. And I've only just finished pre-season an hour ago, if that. So, yeah, it's been interesting. It's been a long one. But it's definitely been worthwhile. We have brought in quite a few players. Brought in some big money players. And we are predicted to finish top of the league. So hopefully those predictions can come true. And we kick it off with a win against Nani and Bala today. So first things first, let's have a look at the transfers. At the guys we have brought into the club. And first one is a guy who I did show you in the last video. But that was before he joined us permanently. It's David and Bala. Now we can see all his attributes. He's 27 years old, played twice for Congo, his country. He's valued at £110,000 and we have got him on a proper contract. He did want a non-contract at first, but I'm thinking even if we only have him for six months, if he scores 10-15 goals and we get a hundred grand for him, I'll be a very happy boy. And so, yep, we're paying him £675 a week. He's got 15 for acceleration and pace and for off the ball. Technique is 13. First touch is 12. Dribbling is 13. I've got him working on his crossing. That's the one area of his game where he's a little bit weak. I am going to be playing him as an inverted winger. So maybe might not be crossing all that much. So yeah, hopefully he can kick on and improve on that. He's four and a half star current and potential ability according to me coaches. So, yeah, very happy days. He should be good for us. And then next one in is Lewis Richards, 18 years old, joins us on a breakthrough prospect on a non-contract deal. Two and a half star current, four, maybe five star potential ability. Decent little backup. He's got decent heading, decent marking, decent tackling. And, yeah, he's okay. Not too much to talk about yet, but if we get an injury crisis, he should be solid enough. To step in and then next one in is our new number one goalkeeper we lost Alex Street who asked to leave the club and then changed his mind but it was already a month until his contract ended so I just decided to let Street go Josh Barnes comes in 22 years old valued at 17.25k on a £350 a week deal three star current four maybe five star potential ability so again he looks decent he's going to be our number one keeper so hopefully he can be very very solid following him in is a guy from Huddersfield again on another freebie deal Sam Sarok Peplo what a name that is for the lad what an absolute mad name and so he's 18 years old, another left back, tackling of 12, decisions of 12. Doesn't look that brilliant now I'm looking at him for a second time. But again, he's, on, he's another one on a non-contract deal. Again, just brought in in case of an injury crisis. So hopefully he can step in if and when he needs be. And then next one in is a guy from Aldershot. We've got him on loan. We are paying quite a lot of money to have this fella on loan. It's Ollie O'Dwyer. If any of you know of him and know if he's any good, please do let me know. But he looks fairly decent for this level here, I think. 14 heading, marking of 13 and tackling of 13. He's 6 foot 6, 9 strength, jumping reach of 14. He should be fairly decent down at this level. I'm quite happy with him. We are paying all of his wages, I think. Yes, we are. We're paying 575 quid a week for the lad. So he really needs to impress. 
Next one in is the start of our Norwich Invasion. One of the new features this year is that if somebody's released from a big local team, they'll be more likely to join lower league teams that are local to where they are. So I've taken full advantage of that. We've got Zach Johnfield in on a import in an, on a important player deal. Four hundred pounds a week, central midfielder, ball winning midfielder, first touch of eleven, long shots of eleven, tackling of ten, concentration and teamwork of eleven, and stamina of twelve. So I'm fairly happy with him. He's eighteen years old. I think they're pretty good stats for someone at eighteen of this level. But if you disagree, please do feel free to let me know down below. I've never really done too many lower league saves. So I would like your guys' input on if you think I've overpaid or if I've done something stupid by signing some of these guys. Knowing me, I have done something stupid. So please do feel free to let me know. And then the next guy in is another central midfielder from Norwich. 19 years old, 550 quid a week we're paying this guy. Dribbling of 11, first touch of 11, passing of 12, acceleration, agility, balance, all of 12. His mentals are okay, not, not amazing, but not terrible either. So I'm fairly happy with him coming into the club. He might get to five-star ability in the next couple of years. You never know. And the last one in from Norwich is, of course, someone we all know from last season. It's Alfie Payne. This deal took all summer to conclude. We only got it done, what was it? At the end of July, was it? Yeah, beginning of August, so a week ago. But I tried from day one of pre-season. He just wouldn't agree a deal. But finally, we got him a week ago. He's on 650 quid a week. So he's up there for one of our highest paid players. But yeah, we all saw him last year. He did very, very well. He won our Player of the Year award. So very happy to get him back. It helps keep the fans on side as well. So yeah, I'm very happy to have him back. And I am expecting another big season from the lad. And now last two in, we're just going to look at these very quickly. These are just backups. Daniel Barden, Welsh 19-year-old keeper. Three-star current, four, maybe five-star potential ability. And yet he's not costing us much at all. I think we're paying, what, £15 a week or something? That's what the wage budget is being taken out of for him. So yeah, I'm very happy. With that deal, he's a decent little backup keeper. And this guy is one I've been looking for all summer. A backup right back. Could not find any that I could agree any terms or any deals with. So Raheem Sackleford has come in. Where was he previously? He's been at Maidenhead and he started over at Fulham. So yeah, that's him in the football club. 11 crossing, 14 acceleration, 12 stamina. He could be an alright wing back. Hopefully, we never need to see him too much. Well, let's have a look at the dynamics. We've got uh, three team leaders. Nobody highly influential anymore. Okay. Adam Marriott is now supporting us from that team leader list, which is very nice. Chris Smith is supporting us from the influential players. And a few of the others are supporting us, so that's quite nice to see. 11 players support me. 11 players have no real opinion. And have we got an update from the season review video? Harry Lim, he is in the core social group. Very happy to see that. He was the one guy in the others at the end of the season review video. So I'm happy he's now in the core social group. And let's go competitions. Let's have a look and see where everybody else is predicted to finish. How do we do that? It's over here, isn't it? Do, 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 do. Season preview. I pressed the wrong button there. And yep, there we go. We are 2-1 to one to win the league. Interesting. And Chester are second. And where are Nuneaton Borough? They're 16th and 11-1 and to one to win the league. So, decent, decent is for them, seeing as, they've, seeing as they've just come up. So, yep, so hopefully should get a nice, comfortable win today. Let's have a look at the tactics. And yep, this is going to be a team... For today's game, 
Josh Barnes in goal, making his debut. Swain, Fry, Smith and Richards all keeping their places from last season in the back four. Dronfield as our defensive midfielder, one of the guys from Norwich. Payne and Parsons in the middle of the pitch as deep line playmakers and a ball winning midfielder. And then we've got the new boy Mbala on the left. And we've got George Brown on the right hand side. And Adam Marriott up top as well, all on his own. Hopefully might get some help from the inverted wingers. And they will give him some support to get a couple of goals. And actually one more thing I need to be changing. We haven't got any strikers on the bench. There goes by rides. He can come on. In place of Sam Kelly. We'll go for that. And that is going to be the last change of the game. And so what am I going to predict for this game of football? I'm going to say... 2-0. Um, 2-0 us, I'm thinking. Nice, comfortable, first win of the season. And I'll be back with you boys when that game's loaded up. Oh, just before the game does start. These are our expectations for the season. Pretty similar to last year. The board, despite us being predicted to win the league, only want top half. They want first round of the FA Cup, which would be very nice to get this year. And they want second round of the FA Challenge Trophy. So, yep, back again in a minute, guys. See you in a second. Hi, right, here we are. We are 6-4 to four to win this game against Nunny and Borough. Like I say, I'm predicting a 2-0 win. Should be nice and straightforward. Hopefully the lads are accustomed to the new formation. And yep guys, so let's go 2-0 win. Come on lads. Nunny and Borough are going with a 4-4-2 cautious approach at home against us. Hopefully we can run at them and get some joy against them being so cautious. And let's go ask assistant 7 instruction set for the home side. And let's go. Come on, lads. Show me what you can do. No reaction. There's a lot more to come from you. Only one guy reacted to that. A few more then. Mm, that's not the best start. That is not the best team talk to start off the season, boys and girls. First highlight of the game is Nunny and Bala with a free kick. And the ball gets headed away. Eventually, Payne gets the ball forward. And it goes only as far as James. He tries to go out wide to Grant. And we win the ball back there. Richards again with a long ball though. It's all back and forth. Pretty much Sunday league football style here. And now Parsons gets the ball down. And now can we start playing some decent football here? Marriott with the ball. To Payne. To Parsons. And now he's got a man out wide. But he does not pass it to him. And now Smith. Payne. Is this on full highlights or something? Because this is a very long highlight here. Nope, is just key. We are doing a little bit like Kings Lynn at the weekend. Trying to score a 21-pass goal, which would be nice. And Barla plays it in. Marriott with the shot. And it's hit the post and been cleared. But that was a decent first move of the game for us. And now immediately following that, we've got a free kick. Payne with it. Goes to Smith and it's cleared off the line. Oh my gosh. So close to taking the lead there. And now Minkley to Grant. Are Nunny and Bow are going to come at us? Oh, they might do. Highlights are coming thick and fast at the minute. And we win the ball back. Dronfield to Smith. He clears the ball long. And Brown is in oceans here. He's got so much space. He's one-on-one -on -one with a keeper. Have one-on-ones been fixed? No, they haven't. One more highlight just before half-time. It's Bow with the ball. They throw it to Helm. But Mbala, our star man, wins it back. He runs into the Nani Mbala half. He plays it through. Brown is in. He's got a chance here. And it's 1-0. George Brown with our first goal of the season. Very nice move there on the counter attack. David Mbala did that all pretty much himself. Very nice run from him there and a very nice pass as well straight into George Brown one touch two touch third touch put the ball in the back of the net and we lead just before half time and yep that's half time so so far it's 1-0 to the Kingsland boys 
We've had six shots to their three, only the one on target each. Little bit worrying, would have liked one or two more on target and we've just about edged possession. So I'd say we've just about been the better side, but not by a whole deal. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say I'm not happy. I'm going to risk it. And all, most of them are fired up. Who's the one who's stressed? It is Zach Dronfield. So let's have a chat with him. Let's see. There's a lot more to come from you. Still not looking happy. Oh, well. Let's get into the second half. Couple more goals would be beautiful. First highlight of the second half. Payne with a free kick. Crosses it in. And the man who was stressed, Zach Dronfield. Going to be a bit more stressed now after missing that. Ten minutes in to the second half. Grant with a corner for Nanit and Bala. It's an outswinger. He's gone into the box. And oh, it's an own goal. It's an own goal to put Nanit and Bala level. And it's the star man, Mbala. Let's have a look at this. Oh, what a nightmare of a debut for the fella. Gran with the corner, crossed it in. Heckenhall headed it in. Our man tried to clear it. Swain, I think it was, who tried to clear it. It hit Mbala and goes into the back of the net. Oh, Burrow are coming again. Half an hour left in the game. Young throws it into my ring. Plays it back to Young. And that's a good cross there. Powell with it and they've taken the lead. Oh, what a nightmare this is. This was not part of the script, people. Oh. Okay. Myring here played it back to Young. And what a cross that was. Straight to Powell. And he puts the ball in the back of the net. And oh, they saying this might have been offside. I can't see from that angle. I don't think he was. You know what, guys? This is what we're doing for the last 20 minutes of the game. We're making one change. Spy Ride's coming on for George Brown. But we're going 4 3 1 2. And we're going to go attacking. More direct passing. Try and nick an equaliser. Because this would be quite an embarrassing defeat. On the first day of the season. Alright guys. We've made a few more changes. Because we have just over 5 minutes left. We've gone for extremely direct passing. Much higher tempo. We're going for distributing the ball. Over the opposition defence. Counter press and counter. When possession has been won. And we're going for a higher defensive line. And a much higher line of engagement. Please, please, please let us get an equaliser. Five minutes left, and here we go. Are those new tactical changes going to make a change? Mbala's got the ball. He needs to cross it here. That would be nice, and he has. But he's gone to James, and the ball goes away back to Fryer, to Swain. He plays it over the top, and can Marriott get onto this? He does, and he's at the post. How has Adam Marriott missed that from there? Oh, that is not how you start a season, lads. Oh, my gosh. 2-1 defeat. 2 none and Bala. We've lost it because of an own goal. If it wasn't for that really rather unfortunate own goal, we would have got a point. But looking at the match stats, they ain't the best, are they? Eight shots they had, two are ten. Four on target they had, two are one. One on target, 53% of the ball we had. A draw might have been a fairer result, I possibly think, I don't know. Let me know what you think down below, what you think, how the match should have ended. And let's go team talk. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm not happy. And that's got most of them motivated. So let's go continue. And let's see where we're going to come back with you for the next episode. I think I'm going to try and jump forward quite a bit. Going to try and get eight, nine games ahead. So let's see where that brings us back. So one game from now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tenth game of the season is Darlington. Do we do that? Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll come back. We'll come back for the Bl for the Blythe Spartans and the Darlington doubleheader. I think that sounds good. So guys. That is where we are going to leave it today. 
If you've enjoyed that video, please give it a mahoosive thumbs up down below. Please, as many thumbs up as you can give this series, please. It's really, really going to help the series out. So please do give as many thumbs up as you can. Subscribe to the channel for more FM20 content, more Pro Evo 20 content at some point as well. And follow me on Twitter at Bad Jokes Gaming. Go and check out the Passion for FM Discord server and the Passion for FM website. They are doing record numbers at the minute for views on the website thanks to the content creator team. So please do check out that website for all your downloads, all your things like that. I'm going to have a video coming out either today or tomorrow about how to install databases and filters and squad views and all that sort of thing. So, yep, look out for that one as well. And yep, guys, that's everything from me for today. I shall see you later. Bye.